Hey there, I'm Ryan from Go Natural English, and today I'm going to talk about Shimnahirun. What? What? If you find yourself saying what or what when somebody says something that you don't understand or that you didn't hear, you might be surprised to learn that it can actually be a little bit impolite or a little bit rude. So in today's lesson, I'm going to give you a handful of ways that you can express to somebody that you didn't understand and if they can repeat that in a friendly and fun way. And there are a variety of ways to do this. And it will depend on different situations, whether you are face to face or on the phone, whether you want to be polite or more informal. And today, make sure you watch the whole video so you know which ones you can use in which situations. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up so we can continue to give you guys the content that you like and we'll help you learn best. Now, I want to start with a phrase that can be used in any situation, face to face, over the phone. If you want to be polite, impolite, doesn't matter. This can be used in any situation. And it's, I'm sorry? If you're on the phone, I'm sorry? And notice the rising intonation, right? Sorry? I'm sorry? But don't go too high, right? Don't take it to the, to the max. I'm sorry? If you do that, people are going to think something's wrong with you. So just give it a little bit of rising intonation. And it's important because if you, if you have a flat or a falling intonation, it can come across as, uh, you, you know, you're grieving for them or you have, you're very empathetic for something that happened to them. I'm sorry. You can't even, you can't even have a falling intonation without having a sad face. I'm sorry. No, it's not even possible. If you can do it, if you can do a falling intonation with a positive face, link a comment down below to a video and I'm going to be super surprised and I'm going to give you a thumbs up. The best thing about I'm sorry is that it can be used in front of any of the other terms that we learned today. When you do that, you can just put it in front, but then you kind of make it flat. You won't have the rising intonation. I want to start with terms that are best used when on the phone. So imagine you were on the phone with your bank because you just lost your credit card and they're telling you, you need to call this number and you need to call 514-699-6219. Instead of saying, what? You could say, could you repeat that, please? Now notice the please is in parentheses. If I want to add another level of formality and politeness, I put the please there. So they tell me this number super fast that I wasn't able to write down. I can say, could you repeat that? And remember, the rising intonation. Could you repeat that? Or I could say, could you repeat that, please? Now this can also be put at the end of any of the terms that we learned today. In the example that we just used, if the guy tells me a number really fast that I couldn't understand, I can use our first term and our second term. So I'm sorry can go in front and could you repeat that please goes in the back. So I could say, I'm sorry, could you repeat that please? And it sounds totally good, it's totally natural, and it's very friendly and polite. The next expression is one that I use a lot when I'm on the phone and I didn't quite understand what was being said to me. And it's to not catch something. My grandma's talking to me and she says something, but she's coughing as she says it. I could say, I didn't catch that, grandma. I didn't catch that. We could also say, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Or I didn't catch that. Could you repeat that, please? You can always put, could you repeat that at the end? Or I'm sorry at the beginning in front. I didn't catch that is a really natural, really fluid way to express that you didn't understand. I use it all the time, so I definitely recommend learning this one and using it in situations where you need someone to repeat something. The last term, which is more useful on the phone, I didn't get that. So you can say this in the sense of to get as in to understand. I didn't get that. I didn't understand that. If my brother calls me and he's r driving his whip, and you would know whip if you watched the American slang video, he's driving through a tunnel and the connection is coming in and out. And I could say, man, I didn't get that. And this is telling him that I didn't understand and that I need him to repeat what he said. And again, we can put, I'm sorry in front, or could you repeat that please at the end? I didn't get that. Could you repeat that please? So putting, could you repeat that please is also more formal and it's more polite. So you might say this to a banker on the phone or a credit card company or something like that, a boss at work. I wouldn't say that to my brother. I didn't get that, man. Say it again. I'd, I'd be a little bit more short with him. Now I want to talk about some expressions that you would use in person and that sound really fluid and are really polite and formal. Imagine I was sitting on a park bench 
I'm listening to music, I'm just zoning, I'm doing my thing. And then somebody walks by and I notice that they're talking to me. I could take my headphones out and say, what was that? Again, notice the rising intonation. What was that? What was that? It goes up. Don't take it to the sky. You can say, what was that? And this is a nice way to let them know that you didn't hear what they said and that they need to repeat it. You can also say, excuse me? You take your headphones out, excuse me? And then they would repeat and, and say what they wanted to tell you again. For example, if you were in a library and you were reading a book and somebody walks by and they say, hey, do you know where to find the, the fiction section? And you could look up and say, excuse me? And then they would repeat and then you have a nice little conversation. But both of these, excuse me and what was that? They're both a rising intonation and they're both friendly and simple ways to express that you didn't understand and that you didn't hear them. And I'm talking a lot about the rising intonation. It's so subtle, but it expresses a level of friendliness and a level of willingness to help. So it's very nice. It's a very kind uh, sound. So the next one is still a little bit formal. I think it actually might be used more in, in England or in British English. Pardon me. But it's definitely used in America as well. And in those situations, you can say pardon me or just pardon. Remember, there's got to be a little bit of a rising intonation. Pardon? Okay, now for a couple that are a little bit more informal, more casual. ¿Qué te gustaría hacer este fin de semana? You might say, what? So if you speak Spanish, hopefully you understood what I said. Otherwise, you could say come again, and then I would say, what would you like to do this weekend? So come again, a really simple, easy, natural way to say that you didn't understand and if they could repeat it. So even if someone's not speaking Spanish to you and you are waiting at the bus stop, older gentleman walks by and kind of mumbles something to you, you could say, come again? And then hopefully he enunciates better and you would be able to understand. And this is, like I said, simple, casual way to let somebody know that you didn't get it. They need to repeat what they said. And the last one that I want to talk about, the most informal one, it's very common. And there's two versions. We have huh and we have hmm. Now huh is a little bit, you would use this in situations where your speaking volume is not a problem and it's not of any concern. So if I was driving in a car with my buddy and the windows are down and the wind's rushing in and he's telling me, yeah, man, I could say, huh? <laughs> And in situations like that, even if it's not loud, you can say, huh? Hmm. I would say you could use this more in situations where you got to be quiet, where, where the volume is important. So if I was in a classroom and the teacher says something and I didn't quite understand, I could ask my neighbor, hey, did you understand what he said? And my neighbor might say, hmm, because he doesn't want to be loud. So hmm is most useful in situations where you want to be quiet and not have such a big voice in situations where you need to be a little bit tone down on the volume meter. All right, so that wraps up today's lesson. I hope you caught all of that. If you didn't, use one of the words that we learned today down below in the comments and we'll try to figure it out. And if you want more English tips and English learning content, you can check us out at gonaturalenglish.com or sign up and receive emails directly to your inbox. Link is down in the description. I hope you guys enjoyed today's lesson. Take care, I'll see you guys next time. I'm out.